All right, everybody, uh, we are back. Uh, we're going to pick up more or less where we left off in the last uh, segment where we had spent some time kind of starting in X space and we transformed a problem by converting it into Z space. We, can, we computed the Z score uh, and then that allowed us to exploit the structure of the standard normal probability table for the normal distribution in computing areas underneath the curve, which were probabilities of various events happening. Uh, what we're going to do in this last segment uh, related to this topic is we're going to think about reversing that process. Um, so suppose we're given a distribution and we want to find now the X value associated with a particular probability. So this is kind of backwards. Before we were given an X value, we had to figure out the probability, but now we want to find the X value associated with a particular probability. And again, given the distribution information, it's always good to start by drawing the graph. Okay, so the question here is asking us to find the value of X such that only 33% of all values are above X. And you'll notice in the diagram here, the green value would be the table probability if we converted X into a Z-score, but we do not know what X is in the problem. That's kind of the catch-22. What we are given though, is the probability that any observation is greater than X, which is again, uh, 33%. So we're gonna have to reverse engineer the problem that we were dealing with in the last segment. I think the last two segments or so. Um, so let's think about how we're gonna do this. If I know 33% of the probability is in that upper tail, okay, then 50 minus 33%, which is another 17% probability would fall in that green region. Okay, and again, it's going to be easier for us to start thinking in Z space. So the question now, what is the probability that X is bigger than that X question mark threshold? Well, we know what that is. We're given that in this problem. Okay, that probability is 33%. Okay, so what we're going to have to do here is find that Z value by using the table backwards. Okay. Uh, and again, you'll note here, the table value we're looking for, it's not 33%, it's 0.5 minus 0.3. That is gonna be the green area that defines that Z value here. And we argued uh, that that has to be 0.17. Okay, that has to be the area of that green region, 0.5 minus that 0.33 upper tail probability that we were given. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do now is use that standard normal table in reverse. We know we're looking for a probability of 0.17, so we're gonna try to look through that whole table to find that, and let me just show you a snapshot of the table here. Um, so I've kind of zoomed in where we can see that area uh, 0.17, right, corresponds right there to what looks to be a Z value with a tens decimal place of 0.4 and a hundredths decimal place also of four. Okay, so the Z value associated with that probability, okay, that again would leave 33% up in that upper tail. That is equal to 0.44 here. So what we can say here is that 33% of the area in the upper tail is greater than the Z value of 0.44. Rather, the Z value of 0.44 defines the threshold above which 33% of the probability lies. Okay, now we're not quite done here. We have to convert our Z value back into an X value. And hopefully you remember how we converted X to Z, right? To go from X to Z, we subtracted the mean and then we divided by the standard deviation. To go from Z to X, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna multiply by the standard deviation and then we're gonna add the mean back. Okay, so this transformation, this reverse Z transformation, all we're doing here is we're solving for X using that original Z-score equation. Just solve for X instead of solving for Z. Okay, so at this point, 
we are pretty far into the problem. We know our mean and our standard deviation, and we found the associated Z value by backing that out using the probability table in reverse. So if I plug in this mean of eight in for mu, standard deviation of five in for sigma, and the Z value 0.44 in for Z, we find an X value equal to 10.2. So the way we can interpret this now is if we consider this X value of 10.2, 33% of the values from the distribution, right? And that distribution had a mean of eight and a standard deviation of five. Those are greater than that threshold of 10.2 that we just found. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, wrap this topic up with a, uh, another look at another case study here. Um, so PepZone sells auto parts and supplies, uh, including motor oil. Uh, if the stock of oil drops to 20 gallons, they have to replenish that order, so they got to order more. And again, the store manager is concerned that sales are being lost due to stockouts while waiting for an order, meaning they're not ordering enough. Demand exceeds their supply. Uh, it has been determined that the lead demand is normally distributed with a mean of 15 gallons and a standard deviation of six gallons. Um, mean of 16, a uh, mean of 15, standard deviation of six. And the manager would like to know the probability of a stock out given this distribution. What's the probability uh, that demand would exceed the 20 gallons that we have in our inventory? Okay, and again, we're given some information here. We know the mean is 15, right? standard deviation is six. And uh, we want to figure out here the likelihood uh, that we're going to not be covered by ordering 20 gallons in the event demand exceeds that. So let's go ahead and um, deal with the problem first forward, and then we'll think about applying this reverse ideology here. Uh, so again, we know the mean, the standard deviation, and our X threshold was 20. So business as usual, we're going to convert that into a Z-score. G score is 0.83. And we're now asking the probability that X is bigger than 20, which is the same as asking the probability Z is bigger than 0.83. And again, we can exploit our standard normal table here. So again, 0.83, I go to that 0.8 row, that 0.03 column, and we see that that area between zero and 0.83 is 0.2967. Okay, but, that's between zero and 0.83, okay? And we're being asked an upper tail problem here. So uh, again, this is what we've done. We've transformed this problem. We found our Z threshold. We found the table value, but we have to remember what the question's asking. Question asks, what's the probability that Z is gonna be greater than 0.83? Not between zero and 0.83, so we're gonna have to take that table value and we're gonna to have to subtract it from 0.5 here. Okay, so if we do that, okay, 0.2967 minus 0.5, uh, 0.5 minus 0.2967 gives us this upper tail probability of 0.2033. Uh, and that would be interpreted as the probability of a stock out, of us not having stocked enough inventory to meet our demand given that distribution. Okay, now let's think about dealing with the problem in reverse here. Okay, let's suppose the manager wants the probability of a stock out to be no more than 5%. What was it in the last example? In the last example, it was about 20%. So he wants to make it smaller, right? He wants this to be no bigger than 5%, which means we're going to have to take the Z value and we're going to have to move it to the right to make that pink region smaller. How big do we want that pink region? we now want it to be no larger than 5%. Okay, so we're gonna to try to cut down that area in the tail here. This is what we wanna do. And the question now requires us to really think backwards here. Given that there's this upper tail probability of 5%, okay, what is the corresponding Z value? And then what is the corresponding X value, the amount of inventory we need to order to support that particular probability of a stock out? Uh, note that if that tail region in pink there is 5%, then this area to the right of zero in white has to account for the other 45%. Okay, 
Okay, so we're now looking for the table value, right? The Z score that corresponds to a table probability of 45%. Okay, so that is what we need to do here before we can use the Z score transformation backwards to recover the X threshold. So if you were to go ahead and look up in your uh, standard normal table for exactly a probability of 0 0.4500, you'll note there isn't one, but we're pretty close. Okay, down in this row, 0 0.4495 and 0 0.4505 are each 0 0.0005 above and below the value that we are looking for. Okay, so if we find that is the case, we can just take the average of the two Z values which correspond. You guys see we have a Z value of 1.64 and another Z value of 1.65. So a reasonable estimate is somewhere in between those two values, and we're gonna use 1.645 here. Okay, so now we know a little bit. Okay, given the distribution, we have our Z value now of 1.645, which only leaves a 5% probability in the upper tail. And now we can go ahead and apply our reverse Z transformation, uh, plugging in the mean, the standard deviation, and that Z value uh, to conclude here that if we were to reorder about 25 gallons, 24.87 gallons, that would reduce the probability of a stock out during lead time down to 5%. Okay, so Pepzone should set the reorder point at 25 gallons up from their original 20 to make sure the probability of a stock out is under 0.05. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more examples and then we'll wrap up. So next example here says given a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and standard deviation of four, we want to find the X values that 5% of all values are less than this value. Okay, so that's what we're being asked. We want to find this threshold X with the question mark that leaves only a 5% probability in the lower tail of our distribution. We're gonna take more or less the same approach that we had taken in the pep zone example. Instead of the probability being in the upper tail, now it's in the lower tail here. Uh, so in order to find the X value, we're gonna to have to first figure out the corresponding Z value. And again, just like what we saw before, the area in the white here is associated with the probability in that standard normal table. And that has to be 0 0.5 minus that pink tail probability of 0 0.05, which again is a familiar value from the last example. And we should know now that the Z value associated with that is 1.645. And in this case, it's negative because we're to the left of the mean. Uh, all we need to do now is utilize this reverse Z score transformation to recover X from the Z value. So we plug those in there. And if you wanna pause the video, try it yourself. You're more than welcome to. Uh, but when we do that, we should wind up here um, with a X value of 43.42. That would leave us with a 5% chance of observing something smaller than that X value. So correct answer here is D. Uh, let's wrap up by jumping back to our little Ginza uh, case study. We're thinking about ordering salmon here. And we want to determine the amount of salmon that should be bought daily so that Ginza Sushi meets demand on about 90% of the days. And so if you recall in that case study, that was really the question we wanted to start with, be motivated with. And we took some detours, but now we're in a position where we can answer this. If we want to make sure we meet demand on 90.15% of the days, okay, conversely, that means we're not going to meet demand on one minus. 90.15% of the days, which is about 10% of the days, 0 0.0985. So here is what we are given in terms of our picture. Okay, we wanna figure out what is the amount of salmon to order here that would only not meet demand in about 10% of the situations that we're looking at here. So we gotta figure out here, what is the Z value now that would leave an upper tail probability of 0 0.0985. Um, that is what the question's asking. Uh, in order to figure this out, and we know that the area between zero and Z 
is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0985. And that is going to correspond to the table value we're going to need to look up. Like that whole blue region, remember, the table only gives us this portion of that blue region. So I have to chop off this entire left half 0 0.5 to give myself a reasonable chance here, meaning the table value we're looking for is the probability 0 0.4015, that's the blue region, but just on the right half of 12. Okay, and that is what I wanna look for in my table. So if you wanna take a moment, go to your standard normal table, find that value. Uh, you should see that it is located around the 1.2 row and near the 0 0.09 column for a Z value of 1.29. So that Z value, we figured that out. And now all we need to do to answer this question, how much should we be ordering, is we have to convert ourselves from Z space back to X space, back to the original units measured in pounds of salmon. Uh, and we can go ahead and use that transformation. So we're going to take the mean plus the standard deviation times our Z value. And that tells us we should be purchasing about 16 pounds in order for there to only be a 0.0985% chance that we do not meet demand. Okay. So uh, that is the last example I wanted to go through of how to utilize this problem framework in reverse. We started given X, we convert to Z, we get the probability. Now we're able to start with the probability, think about the Z value and recover the X value. See you soon.